I, I think I found some fossils, but um, I'm not sure what they are. Well, let's see what you found. Wow, these are great. You've got some toe bones here. Hmm. Fossils have fascinated us for centuries. To know that enormous creatures once roamed the world and signs of their existence still remains is mind-boggling. But if you know where to look, the evidence is just below your feet. And today, we're going to find it. Texas is full of lost history. From lost cemeteries to abandoned buildings. From the infamous to the obscure. Hitch a ride and travel across the Lone Star State, looking for hints of Texas' colorful past, our lost history. This is Expedition Texas, and we're gonna find it. Hillsboro, Texas, where our producer Chris Moore has the important day job of Main Street Manager for the city. A new downtown business has something he thinks we might be interested in. All right, Chris, I'm here in Hillsboro again. What do you got for me? Oh, man. If I call you to Hillsboro, it's going to be a good time. You've been here a lot of times, man. Y'all have. Well, let me tell you, we have an expedition that you are going to dig. What are you talking about, man? Well, I have a friend who opened a business here just a couple of years ago, and he is a paleontologist. Oh, foot doctor. No. Oh. He goes and finds fossils, sometimes dinosaurs, and he has a lab here in Hillsboro, a museum, puts them on display, does the whole nine yards. Okay, but is there anything really historic in the museum? Bob, this is the oldest history we've ever had on the TV show. So we're headed over to learn about what might be the oldest expedition Texas find to date. Previously, that title was held by a natural feature that held several clues to an ancient past. Uh, many of the, the wells are silted in from the lake being on top of it, so they don't free flow anymore. But there was one uh, called Dead Man's, Dead Man's Well that um, there's always a story that there was this angry cowboy that his, his girl wouldn't ride with him out, out uh. to this part of the world. And uh, so he took off with his mules, and his mules drove right into the, right into the well, and they never found him. But you'll often see, as you're walking around, and you don't notice them, except for the fact that they do grow grass in them. But you can tell where there would have been a nice, large grinding hole right here in the sandstone. Oh. There we go. Oh, wow. Yeah. But you'll notice that they are in circles. You'll see full patterns of, of Indian grinding holes. But once you know what you're looking for, you start noticing overall patterns of grinding holes. I said it was, a, it was a very social thing to sit around and prepare food for your tribe. There was a mammoth found just 2001, you know, not, not too long around the corner, just right around the bend up here. Um, it was a guy, actually kind of an odd story, guy's walking his dog outside and he walks up on what appears to be this log shape that is sticking up out of the mud on the surface, which typically around here mammoths are found about 15 to 20 foot below the surface. And so uh, this fella's tusk was sitting right out on the ground and so he thought to uncover part of it, realized that it was a mammoth tusk because of the shape and the design of it, and then called in the Mount Blanco Museum to come out and excavate. They excavated this huge area and found bits and pieces of maybe up to 15 different mammoths in this one little area that they excavated. So pretty cool, you just never know, like just walking in your own backyard, which you could run up on. And if we look closely in this screen, uh, we can see some fossil shark teeth here. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're watching Expedition Texas.
We're in Hillsboro, Texas, where we've been told there's a paleontologist with some amazing finds who can show us not only actual dinosaur fossils, but take us to where they were found. His name is Andre Lujan, and he talks about his love for paleontology. Paleontology is a subset of geology. So all paleontologists are geologists, but not all geologists are paleontologists. Uh, and paleontology specifically is a study of past life through, through the remains of past life um, fossils. And uh, it's something that every little kid is, is fascinated with, you know, discovering bones. Uh, but really my start in paleontology was a visit to Dinosaur Valley State Park when I was four years old. And uh, I stepped in the track of an Acrocanthosaurus, a big three-toed theropod, and uh, was just transported through time. And it was that moment when it was, you know, it was like a lightning strike. It was like, wow, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And of course, you know, I brought home every rock and uh, possible fossil that, that I could find. Uh, but, you know, as you move through school, there's lots of distractions and things like that. And uh, at one point I fancied myself an artist, but it wasn't until I was about 21 years old and, and painting some uh, scenery in Cedar Hill, Texas. Uh, it was in the summertime, it was really hot. I was waiting for the sun to get right. And I uh, just went down into a creek um, to get out of the heat and found a shark tooth. And I was like, wow, okay, this is really bizarre, but it belonged to a shark called Tychotis. Uh, which is a shell crushing shark. So I thought I'd either found something from outer space or uh, something no other human had ever seen before. So I packed up all of my gear, I went to the library and found a book and it turns out that those fossils were quite common and, and very well uh, studied. But that re-sparked uh, my interest in paleontology and so I kind of put art to the side and uh, started going out every weekend collecting fossils again in instead of painting and uh, it just kind of snowballed from there. Hey, Andre, how's it going, man? Good, good morning, good to hey, see you. Good to see you, nice to meet you, man. So th this building, uh, I'm seeing a lot of dinosaur bones around, I'm trying not to get ahead of myself here. I don't know where to ask to start, so show me around, first things first, something you're most proud of here in the museum. All right, so it's called Texas Through Time, so let's start in the deep time and work our way to the present. In deep time. Yep. Now, Prehistoric or pre prehistoric? What do you call the era that we're talking about here? Okay, well, we're going to go back to the Pennsylvanian, and this is the coal swamps. These are the uh, really? very, very primitive life forms and plants. Uh, okay. So we'll start there, and then we'll work our way all the way up to the Ice Age. Let's go. We're going through Texas through time, guys. This is going to be fun. All right. Well, this is our earliest, uh, this case is our earliest fossils. So most of these are going to be marine invertebrates. So these okay. are shells and crinoids and things like that, brachiopods, sponges even. Really? Yeah. Okay. So this is one of the oldest fossils in our museum. It's a microbial mat from Western Australia. And it's not very impressive to look at. But this fossil right here represents the oldest uh, fossilized life on Earth, some of the oldest fossilized life. And you can see these layers. It's layer upon layer of basically pond scum. Really? So, yeah. And it was alive, so And it, it was alive. So and how old is this? Uh, 3.49 billion years old. So that's what that B-Y-O means, 3.49 billion years old. That's right. Wow. Yeah. All right, so we've, we've now moved into the Triassic area, yes. right? Uh, the Triassic period in Texas was a really interesting time uh, because things change, and we have uh, evidence of the first bipedal dinosaurs. All right, so that's on two feet? Two feet, yes. Okay. So in the Permian, everything was a tetrapod, and it walked around on hands and, and feet. So. Okay, so where's the evidence of that? So this middle track right here uh -huh. looks like a bird track. Yeah, right here? Yes, that three-toed track there is uh, from a dinosaur that we call Coelophysis. So this is the first bipedal dinosaur. Far right, what is that? So that is a track of an amphibian uh, that made it through the Permian extinction. So the Mosasaur, the large marine reptile I was telling you about earlier, Yes. this is the skull of one of the largest species, Tylosaurus. Wow. Yeah. We're in 
in Hillsboro, learning all about the field of paleontology in Texas with paleontologist Andre Lujan. Andre has spent several years gathering fossils all over the state, and he displays some of his greatest finds in his museum in downtown Hillsboro. We moved from the Triassic into the Jurassic period. Okay, now we're getting into what, what I was fascinated with as a child. Right, so what we have here is the, a cast of the skull of an animal called Allosaurus. Allosaurus was a large meat-eating dinosaur, and uh, we have a replica of one of the claws down there. This is a claw? It is. From one of these guys? Yes. Wow. So when the original bones are found, uh, scientists usually um, make molds and casts of them so that those casts can be handled and studied more than the original fossils. Not a bad idea. Oh, wow. So this is where you guys take things apart and put them back together again, yeah, Absolutely. Huh? So this is our body shop, as we like to say. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So we're working on a lot of different things here. Um, but this is the bench. This is where we do most of our work. Um, we use a variety of tools and um, different methods to prepare fossils. And then uh, down here, it looks like, is this air that shoots out? Or no, this is some kind of a drill. What right. This? So this is actually a pneumatic tool. This is okay. basically a handheld jackhammer. Oh. So, so we turn that on, and you can go in and jackhammer the soil right off and carefully clean it from the bones. The stuff that you guys do in here must take hours, weeks. Sometimes hundreds and thousands of hours. This would be one of those specimens that takes that long. All of this work has to be done carefully under magnification because the bones are so delicate and there's so many trapped in that piece of rock. So you're able to look through, I guess, a microscope here and, and work very delicately on the little Absolutely. pieces. Absolutely. So we'll use little hand tools and just carefully scratch away all the pieces of dirt to reveal the bones that are locked inside. So from things we have to look at under a microscope to the opposite end of the scale, uh, we have small things and very big things. Teeth? Teeth. Very big teeth. So the Mosasaur, the large marine reptile I was telling you about earlier, yes. this is the skull of one of the largest species, Tylosaurus. Wow. Yeah. That is insane. When we find some fossils in high concentration, sometimes we don't try to collect the individual pieces. We bring back a whole uh, sampling of dirt from that particular formation. This is an example of that right here. This is some material that we brought back that was very concentrated. And we use a series of these scientific screens to wash the various sizes out. And if we look closely in this screen, uh, we can see some fossil shark teeth here. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And we can also see some little bone fragments. Um, so it can be very tedious and time consuming work, but we want to make sure that we don't miss anything important. But you said earlier there's places that you own where you've found some of these fossils that are on display here. Where's that? Well, we have dig sites all over the country and all over the state, but we actually have one that's fairly close if you'd like to check it out yourself. How far are we talking about? Two or three hours? Two or three hours. We have time for that? We have time? We've got time? We have time. Can we go see that? Yeah. Let me get some tools and I'll meet you at the car. All right. I'll meet you there. So with that, we make the trip out to Olney, Texas to visit a dig site Andre says is guaranteed to turn up some fossils. Today, we're gonna get to, so I'm gonna stay as close as I can to Andre here so I don't get lost. Hey, Andre, I think I got something here, man. All right, let's see. All right. So, what is this? Velociraptor forearm? If it was a bone, I think it'd be a limb bone, but a limb bone. Unfortunately, it's just a limb. Oh. We're learning about the field of paleontology in Texas with our guide, Andre Lujan. 
We started out in Hillsboro, Texas at the museum and lab owned by Lujan. Now he's taken us to the dig site near Olney, Texas. After bouncing across the rocky terrain, we finally arrive at the site in hopes of finding some fossils. Well, Andre, that was a bit of a trek getting out here. It sure is. So where the heck are we, man? We are in the middle of Archer County, Texas. And uh, you say we're gonna find some dinosaur bones out here. That's right. Actually, we're gonna be looking for bones that are from animals that lived before the dinosaurs. Wow, I didn't know there was anything before that. There's lots of things before that. <laughs> okay. And so we're gonna find some interesting stuff. All right, well, let's get to digging, man. All right, let's we'll get some tools. All right. So we're, we're actually in the Texas red beds. Texas red bed. Yes, sir. Uh, well, it's a geologic deposit of this Permian dirt, and it's stained red from all the iron in it. Awesome. Yeah, it stretches all the way out west uh, for 100 miles. We get out of the red stuff, and we get into this light-colored clay here. Um, that is evidence of water, standing water. So this is where life is going to come, just like the African savanna. All the life is concentrated around these pools of water. So this is where the main excavation has been happening. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and start digging right into this exposure right here. Okay. All right, so we're digging in um, just on the edge of this little hole right here. We dug up a skull on our last trip. A skull? A skull, yeah. Skull of, a, of an amphibian uh, that kind of looked like a giant salamander that's alive today. Really? Yeah. Okay, cool. So now that I'm below the surface, I'll switch to, uh, to my knife where I will do less damage if I do incidentally okay. find something. We call those uh, Discovery marks when you see little gouges on oh, the bone. Oh yeah, all right. So we want to avoid discovery marks. That's right. The the slogan for the show is we're going to find it, so we have to find something. Oh, we we definitely will find something. Okay, all right. When all else fails, we can we can surface collect and uh, look for bones that nature has already excavated for us. Okay. Well, uh, do I need to? Uh, Start picking somewhere else to kind you of. You know what, you Bob? A little bit. That's a great idea. Okay. Let me get you a bag. And uh, since you've already trained your eye on what we're looking okay. for, okay. Um, yeah. I'll just see keep digging find... here. Okay. I'm gonna see if I can find some bone to put in here and collect some. Uh, what would you call it? Artifacts, samples. Uh, uh, fossils. Fossils. It's been a long time since science <laughs> class for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey, Andre, I think I got something here, man. All right, let's see. All right. So what is this, Velociraptor forearm? What? Wing bone from a Triceratops? <laughs> or what are those things called, pterodactyls? Yeah, pterodactyls. Yeah. Uh, if it was a bone, I think it'd be a limb bone. But a limb bone. Unfortunately, it's just a limb. Oh. Okay, well, what about these here? I found these little ones. Wow, these are great. You're gonna have to show me where you found these. Okay. This is a piece of amphibian skull. Really? Yeah. Okay, so is this, is this like the uh, inside? That's gonna be the outside. That texture is just like the texture on the outside of an alligator skull. Really? Yeah. Okay, and then what about these other two? Well, this is a piece of limb bone, and this appears to be part of a reptile skull. So we've got basically a bag of dirt here, but this is not just dirt. This includes some of the fossils that are out here that you actually are gonna screen and, and wash off and soak and find even more things. Absolutely. And so what, you got something little in your hand there. What is that? <clears throat> well, this is a freshwater shark tooth. It's called a xenocanthus tooth. And uh, it's characteristic by this strange split cusp. So it kind of looks like a peace sign. Uh, really? Really That's bizarre. a shark tooth and it's freshwater. Freshwater. So do you think they're still around? I don't know, you wanna find out? Nah, I think we need to get this back to the lab. Sometime when you find yourself walking the West Texas countryside, look down. Dig your feet into the dry ground. You're likely to uncover a link to a time when Texas was an entirely different world. Andre Lujan's museum has opened normal business hours in Hillsboro for you to visit and learn more. But the ground beneath your feet is open 24-7 for discoveries if you just know where to dig. Somewhere across Texas, there's another lost legend waiting to be discovered, and on Expedition Texas, we're gonna find it. <laughs>